Hello everyone, my name is Brendan, and in this video we're going to discuss the requirement for incident response and more specifically control 3.6.1 from NIST 800-171. We're also going to discuss what needs to be done in order to satisfy this control. Alright, so let's start off by defining what incident response is. Incident response is the activity or activities and procedures that an organization can utilize to respond to and handle a cyber attack, or as is more often referred to as an incident. Now, let's discuss what an incident is. An incident is any kind of violation or imminent threat of violation of computer security policies, acceptable use policies, or standard security practices that has significant potential to lead to a negative impact to an organization or their reputation, unauthorized access to sensitive data such as controlled unclassified information, proprietary data, personally identifiable information, or customer data. And finally, an incident could lead to the loss of intellectual property or funds. So now that we have an understanding of what an incident is and what incident response is, let's go ahead and take a look at NIST 800-171 and see what that framework is requiring for incident response. So we have control 3.6.1 and this control calls for an organization to establish an operational incident handling capability for organizational systems that includes preparation, detection, analysis, containment, recovery, and user response activities. This control is requiring several different items that to be addressed to ensure that the organization has a robust and mature incident response and uh, incident response handling capability. So the best approach to actually engage this control is to create an incident response plan for your organization. An incident response plan is designed to guide an organization through instances such as data breaches, external and internal threats, and cybersecurity events. Now, NIST has actually went ahead and created a publication that is specifically for incident response, and this is titled NIST 861, the Computer Security Incident Handling Guide. This publication from NIST provides a methodology to incident response, which is exactly what Control 3.6.1 is requiring. NIST 861 has established an incident response lifecycle, which you can see on the current slide here. This incident response lifecycle actually addresses all the requirements from Control 3.6.1. That is why it's highly recommended that if you're trying to conform with Control 3.6.1, you should build your organization's incident response plan using the methodology from NIST 861. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the incident response lifecycle and what an ideal incident response plan should contain. The incident response lifecycle starts with preparation. This phase should address the preparation for response to a security incident. This includes the identification of tools and resources that are going to be utilized during incident response and incident prevention activities, um, identifying all incident response team members, and identifying communication channels that are going to be used. Something I do want to focus on for preparation is training of your organization's personnel that are going to be on that incident response team and responding to incidents. So your organization should be training general users on recognizing potential indicators of an incident, but they should also be training technical personnel so they can perform forensics, data analysis, and properly report on incidents and really ultimately handle and remediate an incident. All right, so the next phase that we have is detection and analysis, and this one's combined. So this phase covers all steps from identifying and analyzing the incident until the incident has completely been remediated. All tools and techniques the incident response team uses for detecting and analyzing incidents should be addressed in this section of the plan. During this phase, the incident response team should perform forensics and search for incident-related information from sources such as audit logs, uh, network monitoring, administrator reports, and the incident response team should analyze this evidence that was discovered to determine the incident's intent and its scope. Uh, detection and analysis is all also going to lead the incident response team and aid their efforts in containment, eradication, and recovery. 
All right, so the next phase that we have is containment, eradication, and recovery. The containment, eradication, and recovery phases cover all steps that are going to be taken by the incident response team uh, for complete remediation and recovery from the incident. Now, in general, the goal of containment is to limit the spread of the incident prior to the incident overwhelming IT resources or causing additional damages to the organization, its information systems, and its network. Some examples of containment are going to be disconnecting devices from the network, applying network filters, or configuring email servers or clients to block certain emails. Once an incident has been contained, eradication steps might be necessary to eliminate different components of the incident, such as deleting malware or disabling unauthorized accounts. Based off the findings from the detection analysis and containment phase, the incident response team should determine the proper strategy to use to eradicate the incident. Following both containment and eradication activities, the incident response team can begin recovery efforts to bring the impacted system or systems back to normal operations, and if applicable, harden systems to prevent future incidents from occurring. Examples of recovery strategies include restoring systems from clean backups, rebuilding systems from scratch, replacing compromised files with clean versions, installing patches, and changing passwords. All right, so the last phase that we have within the incident response life cycle is the post-incident activity. After an incident has been contained, eradicated, and recovered from completely, the incident response team should gather to discuss the incident in detail, walking through the steps that they took to handle that incident. The incident response team should also discuss any lessons learned during their incident response activities and evaluate the entire incident to really just determine if anything needs to be changed or if the incident response capability or plan needs to be changed so they can better respond to an incident in the future. The incident response plan is meant to improve incident response capabilities. If you would like to learn more about the incident response lifecycle and how to improve your organization's incident response capabilities and create an incident response plan, I've provided a link to NIST 861 in the description of this video. All right, so I do want to make everyone aware that there are two additional controls within the incident response control family in NIST 800 -171. So the first one that we have here is to track, document, and report incidents to designated officials and or authorities, both internal and external to the organization. And this control is pretty much just saying that the organization should have a process to document, report, and track incidents. Now, this can be handled by having a proper incident reporting process for internal and external parties. But additionally, your organization should have uh, something such as a incident response handling form where all details from the incident can be recorded and tracked. And the other control that we have here is 3.6.3. This is test the organizational incident response capability. Uh, you want to ensure that your organization is testing its incident response capability and incident response plan. And it's recommended that the incident response capability is tested with tabletop and functional exercises at least annually. Testing should include all incident response team members also. All right, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you would like to see a specific video, please leave your recommendation down in the comments section. Thank you. Have a great day.